Hello, friends, and welcome to the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church Sunday morning service. We're certainly happy to have you to listen in and to hear a word from God. Friend, today I want to bring to you a message that I've titled, Three Things That Make an Outstanding Mother. Three Things That Make an Outstanding Mother. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 2. We'll begin our reading in verse 1 and read down through verse number 7. Listen to the scripture. The Bible says here, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Three things that make an outstanding mother. Friend, uh, today is Mother's Day, and we certainly want to wish all mothers who may hear this the best of Mother's Days. I hope that you have an outstanding day today and that you'll be blessed by your children's presence. Friend, uh, as we try to introduce this message to you, we just begin by saying, Mother's. What in the world can we say about mothers? Well, everything good and nothing bad whatsoever. The story is told of eight-year-old Mary uh, who wrote her mother a note for Mother's Day. And the note said, Dear Mama, here is a box of candy I bought for you for Mother's Day. And I just want you to know it's very good candy. I know it's good because I already eat three pieces of it. And then the story is told of eight-year-old Carol, who wrote her mother and said, Dear Mama, here are two aspirins. I hope you feel better. Have a happy Mother's Day. And then six-year-old Johnny and his four-year-old sister Susie presented their mama with a Mother's Day present, a small, spindly little house plant. While it wasn't the finest-looking specimen in the plant uh, world, they bought it with their own money, and their mama was thrilled to death. She just hugged and kissed them young'uns and told them she loved them for thinking of her. And Johnny said, well, Mama said there were some other flowers we wanted to buy for you, but we just didn't have enough money. Yes, yeah, said Sister Susie, they had a real nice bunch of flowers at the shop that we were going to buy. Mama replied, but I love this plant, and said, it said, Happy Mother's Day. I know, Mom, said Johnny, but these flowers we wanted to buy for you would have been just perfect. They were in a wreath, and they had a big ribbon on them saying, Rest in peace, and it's always what you're asking for, just a little peace so you can rest. Friends, those are very uh, childlike things that could happen in anybody's life. But today, I want to motivate each of us to seek the power of God to enable us to be a successful parent. Whether you're a, a father or a mother, this message could reach into your heart. You know, uh, friend, as we think about this, giving birth doesn't really make a woman a mother. 
It takes more than just that. It takes a special woman to be a mother. A mother is a person who is willing to take the responsibility of investing her life into another human being who is totally dependent upon her to do so. There is a poem that I come across that just really reached into my life, and I pray that it reaches into yours. And it's titled, The One Who Follows Me. And I do not have an author's name. Uh, the author is unknown. But what a beautiful poem it is. Listen to the words. A careful mother I ought to be. A little one is following me. I do not dare to go astray, for fear my child will go the self-same way. I cannot once escape my child's eyes. Whatever the child sees me do, the child tries. Like me, my child says I'm going to be that little one who follows me, thinks that I'm good, thinks that I'm fine, believes in every word of mine. The base in me she must not see, that little one who follows me. I must remember as I go through summer sun and winter's cold, I am building for the years to be this little one who follows me. And how true that is uh, for either a father or a mother. Little eyes are watching you. Sons and daughters are watching you, wanting to be just like you. So friend, be careful how you live before them. Be careful, little mouth, what you say that those little ears can hear. You know, I said that there were three things that I wanted to bring to your attention that makes somebody an outstanding mother. And let me share those with you real quickly. First of all, to be a, to be a real strong, powerful mother in your home, you need to have a personal relationship with God. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 5, I think Paul addresses that as he's talking to young Timothy. He says there, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Now he's talking to his young preacher greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I may be filled with joy. Listen to this. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. So you see, my friend, those little steps following you. I mean, here's young Timothy, the preacher of the gospel. Listen to what he, Paul says. He really stresses this. He says, this unfeigned faith that dwelt first in your grandmother. That's Timothy's mother's mother. And then thy mother, Eunice, she passed it on to Eunice. And Paul said, I'm persuaded that's in you also. So Eunice passed it on to the young preacher, Timothy. So see, friends, you can make a difference in your child's life by passing your faith on to your child. I've said so many times, your life could be the only Bible some will ever read. So let others see Christ in you. And there's no better one to see Christ in you than your child. Now, if we look at our text and we talk about the mother of Jesus, Mary was a person of spiritual integrity. In Luke chapter 1, verse 30, the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for uh, thou hast found favor with God. One of the greatest things that any mother can do is to find favor with God. Now, Mary was a person who enjoyed the presence of God. In Luke chapter 1, verse 46 and verse 47, 
The Bible says here, And Mary said, My soul doth magnify, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in my Savior. You see, Mother, one of the greatest things that you can do is magnify the Lord and uh, have your spirit to rejoice in God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, at any given moment. So she was a person of spiritual integrity, but she was also a person who enjoyed the presence of God. Mary was a woman that was hungry for God. Friend, what are you hungering for today? What is it that really gets your attention? The first thing necessary to become an outstanding mother is a personal relationship with God. Are you hungry for God? Then the second thing that's necessary to be uh, an outstanding mother is to have a proper relationship with your family. Now, Mary supported her husband's leadership. She respected him, and uh, he respected her. Mary taught her children discipline in honor of God. Over in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 51 and verse 52, notice what the Bible says here. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. In other words, Uh, Jesus was subject unto his parents, but his mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. You know, my friend, one of the most important things that a mother can do is to train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, they'll not depart from it. You see, my friend, it's so important that you uh, reach into the lives of your children. Now, I know and realize that many that I may be talking to today, that your children is grown and gone. But if they are, you've got grandchildren and you can reach into their lives and make a difference into their lives. But for those of you mothers who may hear this that's got small children, train that child up in the way that he should go. Teach that children to love the Lord Jesus Christ with all of his heart. And friend, as he begins to grow older and uh, the world begins to reach out and try to pull him in, he'll remember how you trained him and he'll not depart from that faith. There's a good application here. If your children don't honor and obey you whom they can see, how will they learn to obey God in whom they cannot see? lest you teach them to do so. So Mary taught her children discipline in honoring God. And then Mary was faithful to her children. In John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 25, the Bible says there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. My friend, even in death, she stood by the Lord Jesus Christ. She was right there as he closed his eyes in death on this side of eternity. The first thing necessary, my friend, to becoming an outstanding mother is certainly a personal relationship with God But then the second thing necessary is a proper relationship with your family. And then let's talk about the third ingredient of being an outstanding mother. You see, uh, it's important that you have a willingness to serve God. It's one thing to talk the talk, but it's another thing to walk the walk. And that's exactly what you need to do as you uh, work to rear your children in the love and admonition of the Lord. As you reach into the grandchildren's life, have a willingness to serve God. Let them know that you serve God. Over in Luke's gospel, chapter 1, verse 38, the Bible says, And Mary said, Behold, 
the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. You know, we live in a feel-good society, and we usually do as we want to do instead of doing what the Lord would have us to do. And it's so important that we remember to do what the Lord would have us to do. Now, the angel of the Lord appeared to Mary here and told her that she would conceive and that she would bear a son, and it would be the son of the living God. And when the angel told her that, Mary had a willingness to serve God. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the Bible says the angel departed from her. So she had a willingness to serve God. Friend, today, do you have a willingness uh, to serve God? One of the most important things that you can ever do is have a willingness to serve God. Well, friend, the list could go on and on, but these particular three, to me, are the most important uh, thing that could take place in a personal uh, life is, number one, a personal relationship with God. Now, friend, you may be listening today, and you may say, uh, Preacher, how can I have... A, a personal relationship with God. Throughout the scripture, many men of God, many women of God talked about my God. That's a personal God. You see, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, but the same Lord that is my shepherd can be your shepherd. He can be your personal God. You can have a personal relationship with him. How, you may ask? Well, the Bible says, uh, first of all, that you've got to realize where you are in life. You've got to realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior, that you can't save yourself, that you are far from God, and that you've sinned against God. The Bible says, for all have sinned. That does not negate anyone. The rich man has sinned just like the poor man. Friend, the good person has sinned just like the bad person. So we all have sinned and we come short of the glory of God. Well, they've got to, there's got to be something done about the sin. And God did that something by sending Jesus Christ to, to die on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God has provided the means to deal with the sin. But then you have to choose as to whether or not that you want to deal with the sin. To have a personal relationship with God, you must deal with the sin in your life. The Bible says over in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9, that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that's exactly what you need to do to have a personal relationship with God is confess your sins, not to me, or not to some uh, deacon or a Sunday school teacher or another person, but confess your sins to God, and he'll hear you. Now, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And all you've got to do, my friend, to have a relationship with Christ is to ask him to come into your life, to forgive your sins. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's what you must do to have a personal relationship with God. And when you get that personal relationship with God, it'll make you one of the greatest mothers that you could ever be. It'll make you one of the greatest daddies that you could ever be if you're a man who may be hearing this. But then secondly, you've got to have proper relationship, not only with God, but with your family. 
Uh, friend, one of the most important things is that uh, you have a proper relationship with family. You've got to spend quality time with family and build your family. Let your faith help you build your family into what you would have them to be. And then most important, if you build a personal relationship uh, with God, then you've got to have a willingness to serve God. You know, there's so many other things that we can serve in this life. And even after getting to be a child of God, many times uh, we don't have the willingness to serve God as we should. We serve God as we want to. But we need to serve God as the Bible teaches us we need to serve God. I mean, if you look at the life of Mary, uh, whenever the angel told her that she would conceive a child, she made it very clear Whatever God wants to do, here am I. You and I need to have that same attitude, a willingness to serve God and follow His direction instead of following our own directions. When one has a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ the Lord, it's then that everything else falls into its proper place. Now, let me ask you something today, dear mother, who may be hearing this. Do you have a personal relationship with Christ? If you don't, his invitation has never changed. His invitation is still come unto me. Friend, maybe you've had a relationship with Christ, but yet you've not had the willingness to serve God as you know you need to serve God. His invitation is still, come unto me. Maybe there's some other type of decision or commitment you need to make today. Friend, his invitation is still, come unto me. It's never changed. So all you've got to do is come unto him. Build you an altar somewhere in your home and go to him. You may take a chair and just pull it out from the table and kneel on your knees uh, and put your elbows in that chair. That's your altar. You may not even be able to get down on your knees, but you can in the knees of your heart. Friend, find you an altar wherever you are and build a personal relationship with God by accepting Jesus as Savior. And then if you hadn't had the best family relationship, begin to work on that but always have a willingness to serve God. And when you do so, my friend, it's then that you will realize that you are an outstanding mother. Think about that. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the message of the hour. And now, God, we pray in Jesus' name that you'll use it in the life of some mother that may hear it, in the life of some father that may hear it. May you always be focused on uh, as we live our lives for you and as we focus on you and as we trust you, it's then that all things will come together for your good. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, friend, I do pray that you made a decision for Christ today and uh, just let him uh, make you an outstanding mother or daddy for the glory of God. May the Lord bless you until we meet again.